the gut-brain connection. You've probably heard in the lay literature or in the science literature that the gut is the second brain. But even that astounding statement is starting to look like it may be erroneous. We have now discovered in the last couple of years that 90% of the serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter that helps your brain function on so many different levels, and more than 50% of the dopamine in the brain that helps reduce things like depression and improve uh, emotional processing, memory processing, complex endocrine function. These two neurotransmitters, 90% of the serotonin, 50% of the dopamine, made in the gut, not the brain. That extraordinary statistic joined with the fact that we have hundreds of thousands of neural connections for every cubic centimeter of bowel lining. An amazing array of neurologic intelligence happening in your body. And what we're now finding is that it's not the brain where thought is initiated. The brain is simply the central processing unit like you would find in a computer, the CPU chip. That's that intelligent Intel computer that's inside your computer. But that chip has nothing in it that would initiate a, a process. That CPU chip uh, of your computer or the central nervous system here has never initiated any data. It's a data processing center, but if you think about it, it's the keyboard and the mouse on your computer that gives the information to a CPU chip that it would do anything. Similarly, this brain has no thought process, has no data to channel, has no reactivity to the world around it without your peripheral nervous system. And the largest portion of your peripheral nervous system lies within your gut. That profound reality is telling you that the story you're going to write for health today or the story of disease you write for tomorrow is going to start at this typewriter of your gut. The language that's going to come out of the story that's going to be told is going to be written across the autonomic nervous system of your intestinal lining and it's going to be processed in the brain to, to initiate the response, the stress responses, the repair responses, everything else that may be needed to get you through a typical day on a chemical planet. And so on this journey, we need to redefine gut-brain health. We really see it now as a science community that you can't have neurologic health without fundamental information from the peripheral nervous system, the gut at large, and you can't get the nutrients and the fuel to that brain without that gut lining. Nutrients would include the precursors and the neurotransmitters themselves, as well as the fuel the neurons run on. And that's really coming out of those mitochondria that live inside the neurons within your brain. They're being fed by your microbiome. And so at every level, the brain is thriving and functioning, fully dependent upon the gut. This is the journey we've been on, is to understand that this is the center of intelligence within the human body. This is your central processing unit. You can get information in, and if the brain is not functioning, you may not process it correctly. And this is the phenomenon we see in, in the public right now, attention deficit disorder in our children, uh, you know, ADHD as it's been termed the autism spectrum disorders, and then in our adults, major depression and anxiety disorders typically setting in in our teen years and then really moving into epidemic proportions in our adult population. Then the neurodegenerative conditions in our adults, things like Parkinson's, MS, Alzheimer's dementia, and the other dementias that may come with something like Parkinson's. These conditions are now all tying back to the reality that all of that dysfunction begins in the gut. America is suffering due to our collapse of the ecosystem within us. We are on a journey and a scientific mission to find you a pathway back to health, despite all of the crazy stuff we've done on this planet.